makes sense. Yeah. So it just kind of brings us. So And turn and face across. All right. We welcome you uh, to this uh, Christmas celebration. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, we've got a, a spike. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> we got a good celebration planned for you. And uh, uh, Tyler and I, uh, and, uh, and Gavin Dean, too. Unfortunately, Gavin couldn't be here in person to uh, preach our sermon, but uh, he was able to tape it yesterday for us, so we'll have a, a, a tape from him in St. Paul, uh, where he's hoping to leave sometime today, I think, uh, to get here to Columbus. So let us uh, sing on this Christmas morning, Joy to the World. The words for this familiar song will be up on your screen, uh, so you probably won't need your bulletin for that. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and 
heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, a Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to Make his blessings flow far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to take on our human nature and enlighten the world with your love. By the grace, by your grace, Lord, adapt us as your children now and enlighten us with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. We will um, invite Bob forward to read the scripture. A reading from Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. <clears throat> for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors. 
ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these days he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir to all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and also the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purifications for sins, he sat down by the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be your father his father, and he will be my son, and again, when he brings the first born, first born into the world, he says, let all angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes angels his angels' wings and his servants' flames of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work with your, of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we celebrate and listen to our gospel. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be Which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria In excelsis Deo This Christmas morning is from St. John, the first chapter. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now there was a man that was sent from God whose name was John. And he came to witness and testify to the light so that all might believe through him. John himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but born of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of the Lord. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in 
Black shall seize day of Gloria. Enoch shall seize day of. You may be seated. <clears throat> I, I, I haven't heard um, Gavin's sermon yet. So I'm not sure what he tells us about himself in there. So I, I might be repeating stuff he says in a second. But uh, Gavin will be uh, graduating from Luther Seminary in May. Uh, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. Uh, uh, Gavin was an active part of our congregation when he was in grade school and high school and uh, served in all sorts of ways. And, um, and uh, the Dean family is obviously a big part of our church uh, now, too. And so this is uh, exciting. He's... He's going to be uh, graduating with his Master of Divinity degree, just like me. Uh, and he's going to be ordained, but he's not going to work in a parish. He's hoping to work in a, as a chaplain instead at a, at a hospital setting or some sort of um, health care setting, right? And uh, which is new. You couldn't do that when I, when I graduated. That's, so that's something that, that's pretty exciting, too, that he, a lot of times people with calls that are other than parish ministry... The church made them go into the parish first before they could do that call. So it's nice that the church is, is more flexible with, with people's gifts and talents. So that's exciting, too. He's just a really good guy. He's just a really neat guy. We've, we've had a very small part uh, of financially supporting him in the church but, but our, our, uh, through seminary, but, but our heart and, and enthusiasm has been with him all the time. So uh, here's Gavin. And I apologize again if he just says all that same stuff. It's a real privilege to be able to preach at the church I was raised in. I honestly wish I could be there with you all in person, but Winter had other plans. Regardless, it's a joy of mine to be able to offer a word, and on Christmas, no less. The day when we celebrate Jesus Christ's coming into the world. And each of the Christmas gospel stories we have is different. But today, since we're reading John, and there's so much theological material, Pastor Carl said that I could record a 45-minute video for you all. So I hope you don't have any other plans this morning. From this passage, I wanted to start with the ways that the world, and in fact all of us, don't receive, that we don't even recognize Jesus. Some of these are large and incomprehensible ways, violence and war and hatred, things that oppose all of what the gospel and the coming of Christ is about. But they can also be little things that add up to us being blind and unwelcoming, resentful of other people. Some examples for me that caused me to lose sight of Jesus in the world, or when people tell me what to do, or when anyone, including myself, is late for something. Or if I happen to tell a really funny joke and no one laughs. We all have things that blind us to where Jesus is, that hinder us from recognizing and receiving him. We, and I would say the world at large right now, actually seem to prefer looking for darkness in each other. We don't want to find Jesus. We would rather insult and doubt and ignore each other because it's easier. And that's what missing Jesus can look like. But today, on Christmas, we rejoice that we aren't stuck in that place. The gospel this morning shares with us that recognizing and receiving Jesus has only a single step. Belief. And I don't think this is necessarily belief without doubt and an ardent, unflinching faith. It's more gracious than that. Belief in Jesus and the gospel is giving the benefit of the doubt. It is trusting that inside of our neighbors and inside of ourselves, there is Jesus. As we read, nothing has been made without the word, without Christ, including all human beings. And this belief is not a once-in-a-lifetime event. It is a daily invitation, a minute-by-minute -minute opportunity we have to act in love. Belief is not what we can get our heads around, but our hands and our hearts. We believe 
when we love as Jesus has taught us. We become children of the word when we love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. We become children of light when we stop looking for darkness in each other in the world and instead look for light and life. I was considering how this gospel related to some of the work that I do as a hospital chaplain. And two weeks ago, I was asked to meet with a patient, Jeremy. And Jeremy had kind of a reputation for being mean to the nurses and people in his family. It's a complication sometimes after anesthesia and a whole mix up of medications that he was on. But I went in to see him and Jeremy was mean to me too. And I left because he asked me to bluntly. But then a couple of days went by and another nurse asked me to go in and see Jeremy. And so I did. And he was polite this time, but then he spoke about all these things I disagreed with and just could not appreciate about the ways that he engaged with other human beings. I did not enjoy our conversation, folks. But at the end of it, he asked me to pray. And so I prayed as I do for many people for the continued healing of his body and the strengthening of his spirit as he's in the hospital. And I said, amen. And I turned to walk out of the room and Jeremy continued, he said, God, I pray today for Gavin. Pray for the encouragement of his work. That he continue to do good ministry for all the people here in the hospital. And then he said, amen. Man. I had really not recognized Jesus inside of Jeremy up until that. Felt like God was demanding in that moment that I recognize that Jeremy is also a child of God. Since then, we don't agree on many things. It was a lot easier to be present with Jeremy, to offer him a heartfelt and honest word. It was a humbling experience having Jesus show up in such a clear way in someone else. But sometimes recognizing Jesus is very clear. But today, we celebrate that Jesus, the light, the life, the word, took on flesh and dwelt among us. Celebrate that Jesus shows up in people like Jeremy, shows up in all of us. That in the brokenness and heartache, the loss of the world, God is still with us. That Jesus is present in the word, in our neighbors, and on the cross. No matter the darkness we see in others, in the world, in ourselves, there is light too. You are not alone in your darkness. Darkness has not, cannot overcome the light inside of you. Today, we honor and rejoice. We shout for joy. We burst into songs of joy as we read in Isaiah that such a great light has come into the world that we can see it clearly in our neighbors and in ourselves. Let us believe. Let us find the light in ourselves and each other. Let us realize and recognize and receive Jesus as the children of light that we are. In the beginning was the word, a force that is from and of and wrapped up as part of God and always has been. This word is responsible for creation. It is life. And that life is an inextinguishable light. John, who we also call John the Baptist, tells the story of this light and this life and this word. And if we can believe, we become children of the word, children of life and light. And that word became one of us, a human, bringing God's grace and truth. Go forth today, children of God, children of light, Merry Christmas, and Amen. We stand and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Angel 
sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful all you nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic host proclaim christ is born in bethlehem hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king christ by highest heaven adore christ the everlasting lord Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with us to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, Hail the Son of Righteousness, Light and light to all he brings, Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, Born that we no more may die, Born to raise each child of earth, Born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Let's gather and pray. God, on this Christmas morning, help us hear the good message that Gavin gave us. We believe not with just our mind, but with our heart and our hands. Help us see the coming of Christ in our neighbors. Help us delight and celebrate the presence of Christ in those we encounter. move towards light rather than darkness. May each of us here trust the power of your light and the victory of your love. As darkness and hate seem to be. We pray for the ministry of this church as we move into 2023 we might be a place where light shines here. We pray for all those who are part of our congregation that they might be moved by the word to explore good ministry as our brother Gavin has. We pray for all those neighbors that might come that we might celebrate Christ within them and serve them and allow them to serve us Lord, and as we move forward, we pray for those who are sick or ill or in need. We lift up especially Elisa and Teresa. We lift up Al Smith's family, and Lois and Meg and Susan, and Sherry and Karen and Joanne, and Adam, and Philip, Kelly. Pray for Cynthia Boring as she prepares for surgery this week. We pray for Ellie Lepley as she continues to heal. We give time for other names to be said aloud. Now. 
Finally, Lord, we pray for all those places where darkness seems to reign. We lift up those suffering in the Ukraine. We lift up those suffering in famine in Somalia. We lift up those that are frightened of civil war in Tunisia. May your light and love win, Lord. Help us trust that victory, Lord. All this we lift up in the name of the risen Christ who's come to us first as a fragile baby, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace and God's love with one another.
Please stand. Lord, receive all these gifts of wealth and bread and talents and help us use them in your world to bring wisdom and love and forgiveness and mercy. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to our Lord Jesus, who has come to us as this fragile baby and has become for us a Savior for the ages. So with the hosts of heavens and the angels, we sing the song of victory. that Jesus made when he walked among us, that when we gathered around this meal and believe and trusted with our heart and our soul, you would be present in a way that is mysterious and wonderful. So we remember the night in which Jesus was betrayed where he took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread, drink this wine, we are proclaiming the very mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come, fill this meal with your presence so that we might leave today on Christmas morning to share that presence with all the world, bringing joy as we do. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God. Amen. You may be seated. We'll bring this forward. We'll bring this good meal forward and share with all of you. And uh, you may, and we will have those who are wishing to commune in their seats and uh, the people we have at home who are communing at home, they'll be our first table this morning. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The rest are invited forward and everyone's invited to eat this meal of God's presence. Come, eat. table on this Christmas morning. May we go out with joy and tell the world what we've seen on this mountaintop today. Amen.
Um, a few announcements. Um, one, if you uh, purchased a poinsettia, and honestly, if you probably didn't purchase a poinsettia, <laughs> but you would like to have one in your home, uh, take one with you uh, today. Uh, we, we are having the office pretty much closed this week ahead. You people can sit down for the announcements. You don't know. I could ramble on. I got, I got like 15 extra minutes, right? <laughs> I know, yeah, G Gavin gave us an eight-minute sermon, so I figured I got another 12 or so I could fill in. The, um, isn't that wonderful? I, I love that idea of uh, belief not being a head thing, right, but a heart and a hand thing. That's, that's something to take away. Um, and, and finding Jesus in unexpected places. I, I, I would encourage you. Gavin is always a man of few words, so that's, uh, so... so, so with me, I ramble on and on, so you could doze off for a few minutes and, you know, not miss anything, but, 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 yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, so we're not going to be open for this week. Um, Gabriel will be in and out doing various functions to make sure January 1st worship service happens. Uh, Jude will be in to, you know, make sure we're, we look nice, uh, both in our parking lot and our, um, and our space for January 1st. But other than that, those two will have uh, the week off, too. Um, and Monday off after New Year, also. So, uh, so if you need something, um, Deacon Elaine is, is on call for pastoral care ministry. And, um, and you can call and leave a message. But you're better off emailing. Um, you're better off emailing. Ron Motor or myself or Deacon Elaine. I'm on vacation, but I'll probably be looking at my emails. I'm just afraid if you leave a message that needs to be responded to and no one comes for two or three days, uh, then it won't get responded to at all. Um, and so you're, you're better off on those options. Uh, for, um, for those of you at home, if you are uh, and here, if you're thinking of giving a, a Christmas gift to Messiah, um, we, we encourage you to do that, and that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, be, if you could do that online uh, before the end of the year, that would be good. Um, if not, if you, could, uh, bring in a, if you could bring in a gift and put it in a mailbox or something like that, it gets harder without a, a large Christmas Eve service because of the weather yesterday. Uh, we, we, didn't, we, didn't do, uh, we didn't do as horrible as I thought we were going to do, but it, but it definitely wasn't as good as I was hoping for it to be, so, so it was good. And honestly, the roads were really bad, so I think people made good decisions <laughs> for themselves by not coming uh, yesterday. Um, poinsettias closed. I don't know if I have anything else. There's no Messiah night this week and next week, and then the third, the second Wednesday, the 11th, I believe is what that is, we will start Messiah night. And uh, we've got a really cool six o'clock uh, class, that three-week class that we're planning. And it is, um, we've got a Ukrainian family coming in, a Nepalese family coming in, and then Lindora uh, is kind of going to moderate it with me. Uh, just the plight of people in other countries as they move towards uh, uh, America and, and uh, what, what causes them to leave, what kind of problems they have when they come, and, and then how we can be better neighbors as the church uh, for them in the midst. So that'll be three weeks, January 11th, January 18th, and whatever, January 25th. So, so put that on your calendars. That'll be 6 o'clock. we got guests coming, so it'd be nice to, uh, nice to be welcoming. I think that's about all I got in the near future. Is there anything I'm forgetting, Bob? Did I forget something? I'm not forgetting, but uh, we have the, the bags that put the oh. in and it makes it a whole lot easier to carry home. So that, that's he's talking about that stack right there. That stack right there. So good. Thank you for that, Bob. And one service next Sunday. One service next Sunday, and it'll be 10 a.m. the same time. Uh, and that'll be uh, Pastor Tim's last contractual service too. We might see him uh, throughout. Oh, and Al Smith, speaking of Pastor Tim, Al Smith's funeral uh, is going to be Wednesday at Scheninger East, which is on Brock Livingston. Right? Livingston, right? Yeah, which is on Livingston and Nobixby. Wednesday, Scheninger East at noon. 
the visitation will be that Tuesday evening, 5 to 8. Uh, so Wednesday, and Tim, Pastor Tim will be leading uh, that service because I am in Toledo with my uh, in-laws on Wednesday for Christmas. Okay. With all that, um, we want to give thanks to all the volunteers. Virginia, I think, was uh, the one volunteer that was here the entire 14 hours that I was yesterday. And, uh, uh, but but uh, a lot of other people were here hours and hours. The, uh, our tech team and our ushers and acolytes and all of our musicians. And, uh, and it, was just, it was just a wonderful gift of people coming together for Christmas Eve. So, amen. <laughs> And you can thank your uh, staff, Worship Director Tyler, for uh, putting all that beautiful music together. Go, go online and hear all the special music if, if you missed it. The uh, praise team did a little choir thing for the first time, I think, that I'd heard him do something like that. And that was really special. And, and both anthems for the chancel choir were, were wonderful. And both anthems for the bell choir. It was just a good day of music. Why don't we stand? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. <coughs> May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and every it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born the shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs> and Merry Christmas.